Welcome to a super duper exciting edition of Inside Media Weekly. I'm Ryan Bonai. I'm joined by Kevin Bastos. He's oh, here. Hi, how are you? Splendid yourself. <laughs> Justin Pinto is here as well. How's everybody doing today? I'm okay. Oh, this is good. good. We haven't been here for a while. Uh, so I know. It's been a wild scene. Mm. So, uh, speaking we, of not here. We'll manage to talk about two things that happened last month somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of things that happened 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, and 10 things that haven't occurred. The Sea Otters are here. Yes. Uh, no. no, they're not here. As a person. Somebody's head. Um, it looks like a car wash may have exploded or something. I'm yeah. not sure what the little... Uh, the sham wow in the corner. Sham, sham, sham wow is a good call. Mm-hmm. Um, don't those soak up all the water? Isn't mm-hmm. that dangerous to have around water? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, can't oh, all are they the putting up some kind of construction tape or something? So, yeah, like... I think uh, something uh, bad is happening here. <laughs> Wow. Yikes. Speaking of crimes that have occurred, let's talk about the big story. You know, we've been off for a few weeks for the holidays. Hope everybody had a fantastic holiday. It's, it's a trick. It's, <laughs> it's a trick. It's cats. Know, let's it's talk cats. about cats. I haven't seen it. I also let's have not talk seen about it. Apparently the cats. very few have. Opening weekend was $6 million. That's very low. And they had very low expectations. They were expecting like $15 million. Uh, and Six is less than 15. It was even worse than that. Um, Pretty confident in that math. Going to be one of the uh, – it was one of the worst openings of all time, um, especially for a $100 million movie. And, and a lot of famous people in this. This isn't like one famous person and like six others. A lot of famous yeah. people in it. But I think the trailers were a little scary. So, <laughs> I think the, the concept, concept itself. Well, right. Yeah, the concept's a little scary. I mean, I don't understand. Was there a clamoring for this? No. I think like – why would no. we spend... There wasn't even much clamoring in the 80s for this. It, people kept seeing it. Have you seen this movie, this show? No. It's not good. Well, then I probably don't need to see the movie, I'll be honest. I, I'm going to... I've got to see the movie. I've got to. I think you're going to have to hurry the movie. really fast. If you no, I'm not going to go to a theater, theater and see the movie. Um, so they're predicting it may end up in losing over $70 million or something like that. That is a lot of money. A lot of money. And there's talk Mm. that, you know, they talked about this digital fur, uh, whatever, whatever Tom Hooper's about. a lot. And supposedly, and this would be an interesting Uh. thing if this is true, based on the digital technology, that they sent out, the rumor is they sent out a new version after the opening weekend to enhance the visual effects a little bit because they're a little too creepy. Is this like when we spent millions of dollars to get rid of... Superman's mustache. I just, I just can't imagine being like, mustache. the film is really a bomb. Well, let's put more money into yes. it. Yes. That's a great idea. Yes. Let's do that. I have to say, I was I was at Universal over the weekend. They had posters up for it. I thought, ooh, this is <laughs> not, not a good move. If I'm going to go to Universal, mm-hmm. a theme park, yes. I don't necessarily think what I'm doing while I'm at a theme park for the weekend is... No. Going to the movies. No. They, I well, just there don't, is a movie theater there. I'm sure there is there, one. Right, like, on the property. It like, just you doesn't could strike go, me as... Do they have dollar days there? I, is it four no. bucks like, for yeah, that like, nay? <laughs> no. You know what I have in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? Mm-hmm. Movie, theaters. movie theaters. But there are, like, you know, swimming pools and... Sure, sure. But you know, what I, movie you know what I don't have in... Yes. Universal Studios. I know. <laughs> theme park. I agree. <laughs> That's not here. I'm with you. Okay. If I'm going to put something in it... I don't know if it'd be the movie that no one is seeing. No. But they just advertise all the properties they own. Everything. Like, years ago when I was there, they had, they had advertisement for Sharknado. I think Sharknado made more money than Cats so far. I would not be surprised. <laughs> I would not be surprised. It was the punchline of many jokes. I actually read that Ian McKellen was compelling in it. In Cats? Yes. Ian McKellen's in Cats? Yes. He is. That's and Dame Judy Dench. Right. I know Taylor Swift is. Right. Taylor oh, Swift. everybody's talked about that. James Corden is in it. I knew that. I knew James Corden was in it. That he, is true. He made the monologue. That is also true. Mm-hmm. Um, Dame Judi Dench. I did not know. Sir Ian McKellen. These are serious actors in a terrible movie. Let me just say this. By another night that Maybe, person. maybe you'll see it and you'll think to yourself, this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to mm, be. No. <laughs> No. Maybe it would be the reverse. Like, everyone thought Shapes of Water was great, no. and you did not like it. No. Everyone thinks Cats is terrible. No. Maybe you think the opposite. I don't like the story. It, it's weird. Maybe they have a change of it. Maybe no. they've thrown a little curveball at no. you. No. No. <laughs> I mean, I, don't, I, I, I suspect you're right. Thank you. Thank you. From a high percentage standpoint. Mm. But there's always a chance. 
um, slight as it might be. I, I, I love that we've led with this story. Just, the, yeah. just so you know, um, nothing else happened. No other big movie nope. came out. No, no, no. For instance, on Saturday, Cats pulled in six hundred ninety thousand dollars domestically in two thousand nine hundred two theaters. So in one That's day, not a lot of money. What did Jumanji make? I, I figured it out. That same day on Saturday, Jumanji made six point seven million dollars. So ten, in ten times. Twenty four days in to its run, Frozen Two made three point one million. I think day. I figured it out. And Star Wars almost almost ten. Did you see Star Wars? I did. Okay. Phew. Yes, he <laughs> did. He, he just said that before he came Ooh. in. Yes. You thought we were avoiding that because yes. he hadn't seen it. Yes. We'll well, we talk can about... talk more about cats if you want. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no. Uh, Star, I, I, are we going spoiler? I assume. Well, it's somewhat. It, no? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to be like, okay, kids. Here's here's what happened. I'm not going to specifically go to plot spoiler points, but I am going to spoil the movie. Okay, good. I, I want to know first, did you like it? Well, <laughs> well, I was going to ask you guys first. Okay, I can I, answer. I can. My answer is complicated, uh, unfortunately. It always is. It always is. <laughs> Star well, Wars Rise of Skywalker. You guys both saw it very early. I yeah. just saw it this weekend yes. with 12 people in the theater. I saw it over Other than me. Thursday. I saw it Saturday. Probably a lot of people there. It's still pretty crowded, yeah. Still pretty crowded. Saturday. Oh, you mean just past the Saturday? No, 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 no. Saturday after. Like, open Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, okay. Is the day. I saw it. All right. Impressions. Is this a good conclu- conclusion to the saga? No, I don't know if it's a good it conclusion to the saga, but itself? I really liked it. I liked it a lot. I, don't th- I think it's uncontroversial in every way. I think there are reasons to hate a lot of movies, but I don't understand the dumping on this film. I don't get it. I think there are a lot of people who are overly critical, overtly critical, and I don't think it merits that at all. Like, I will listen to criticisms of other films, um, most of them uh, ad infinitum, not Star Wars and not Empire, but I think anything else can be justifiably criticized. I don't think this can. I think you're being too hard on it. What about you, Pinto? Um, I liked it. I thought it was good. Uh, I think you I think you could be critical of it if, like, you loved Last Jedi and then they went totally against that style of movie mm. into this one. I don't think you can make a movie to wrap up eight other movies plus all the other mm-hmm. parts of the lore that there are um, and make everybody happy. I mean, you know, the first movie came out f- over 40 years ago. So if you were eight when you saw that movie and it was like your childhood and you loved it, well, now you're almost 50 or you are 50 and it's not going to be the same. I mean, it's just not going to be... The, the the same experience, the same film, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, I thought it was better than 8. I, I haven't really hated any of them. I thought 8 had its good moments, right. but its lows were low. Right, that, and that's If there that's were parts the you easiest. didn't like of 8, you didn't like mm-hmm. them. Yeah, and that's, that's the easiest thing to say about 8, is there are parts that I really liked, and there are parts that I thought that were just stupid. And I don't think there were parts of this that were stupid. Yeah, I mean, there was, there was a few... Um, I'm not a big fan. I mean, it was in the trailer, the whole, like, horses running down the starship thing. But, I mean, oh, yeah. they were going for they, they were trying to come up with a solution mm-hmm. to a problem. Like, I mean, I don't know what you do. But I didn't really care for it. But it's like, what, 30 seconds maybe of a mm-hmm. two-hour-plus movie? There, um, there are parts, though, in in 8 that are painful in my eyes. I, I don't casino, like the whole casino. The whole whatever it's it is. bad. Uh, yeah. Uh, that whole subplot is not interesting or compelling and unnecessary. I think the kid with the broom at the end is bad acting on top of not good plot corny. Uh, really corny really corny um, but I think there are and you know we can all get upset about the milking of the whatever beast at the end that was really just too silly but I don't think there were parts of this one that were silly mm-hmm. I don't think there were parts of it that were painful or bad I thought the time went by fast my, real my, fast my one friend saw it again and he, and he said that the second viewing it's not as good mm. Because the big the big payoff is like the surprises along the way, mm-hmm. and it is like so fast paced. The movie goes by like it's like go 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 like like there's like no downtime. It's just like you know, plot 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 go 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 go. And he said like the big reveals and everything like that like you don't have those anymore. So the second viewing wasn't as good as the first viewing mm-hmm. because you know what's coming. So now you're really paying attention to other things that you weren't paying attention to the first time that may or may not like be as good as you thought they were because you weren't really 
paying attention to all the details per se the first time. It's kind of how I explained it. Um, but yeah, all in all, I, I mean, I thought it was fine. That was great. I, I thought it was good. I should say good. Yeah. It wasn't just like meh. Bon ice. <laughs> Deep. Sorry, my arching question answer. So, as I, I've made clear, let me also say I saw a ranking on Forbes that put this as the worst of the nine, and I think that's undefendable. I don't think you can defend that. Yeah, it's definitely better than one, two, three. Uh, I would say eight. absolutely better than one and two, and I would I would put it better than eight and probably three. I know you would not, mm -hmm. but um, I can't see a justification that makes it the worst of the nine. Or it was the worst of the eleven. This wasn't the worst of the nine. Yeah, I can't see anybody choosing Attack of the Clones over <laughs> any of these films, no. unfortunately. Um, so, complex answer. It's a little complex only because, and I, and I made known after Force Awakens and after Last Jedi, if you, I don't know if I mentioned on the show, but if you recall, at the end of Last Jedi, I kind of muttered to myself, I'm done with this franchise. I, I don't care anymore. And then J.J. Abrams' uh, trailers kind of pull me back in. And the, the problem for me has been, and this is why my answer is a little complicated, is characters have not resonated with me, and I've not really had any appreciation for, for them as characters. And so I don't care about, I haven't cared about what's happened to them. And that was the problem at Last Jedi. I was like, yeah, there's some unanswered questions, but I don't, I don't, uh, I don't care what happens. It's very weird. I walked out of the theater and I had no reaction whatsoever. I didn't hate the movie. I didn't necessarily like it. I mean, it was fine. Um, but I think that was the problem is that um, there's this, you know, the emotion is all wrapped around the, the you know, uh, Ray and Finn and, and Poe's characters. Um, whereas I was kind of hoping a little bit more for a uh, feeling of closure of the other characters. Unfortunately, <laughs> You know, they'd already killed Han Solo off. They had already, you know, killed Luke off at the end of two. At the end of sorry, at eight, um, and then we knew, of course, Carrie Fisher not being around, and that was a little awkward how they tried yeah. to shoehorn her in. I, I didn't. Um, that would be the one like. segment I did not like. And you know, so really, I just so I was watching characters I didn't care as much about, and it was interesting. I remember reading an article with the original screenwriter Michael Arndt, who had tried to do force awakens and he said you know the biggest problem with these star wars movies was when luke skywalker walks into a scene you don't care about anything else all you care about is, is him i feel like i said this about star trek i feel like yes it was kind of cool to have the original characters but i sometimes wonder if you'd not involve them at all if perhaps i might have had more interest around them I, I mean it was a great draw to get you in but i don't know how totally uh necessary they were to the to the plot of of the films of these three films it's like the weirdest long baton toss mm. ever is to have a three film arc to uh to turn over to these new characters that theoretically it's, it's all done like it's now finally their series and yeah we're done with what's going on from a plot standpoint and it's always hard for me because it's fiction obviously you know i feel like they took the force powers way too far in advance of what had been come before um and the problem was they were like really cool scenes i mean i don't know if that was too much but uh you know kylo ren being able to rip the necklace off of ray from mm. across you know that's so cool but then you go well, wait a minute now they can just manipulate objects from any place in the galaxy at any point in time and now suddenly these force powers that before were just kind of I can levitate rocks. I can have a lightsaber jump into my hand. Now suddenly, it was like anything was possible. I felt like it started to suffer from almost comic book disease per se, layer where they felt like they had to keep adding powers on top of powers on top of powers for for it. But it doesn't really hurt the movie because, like I said, it's really cool scenes in the movie. But I feel like that if you were to look at the and try to be critical of the plot holes or whatever um that was kind of a uh an issue but I, and jj doesn't always do a good job wrapping things up he, he hasn't gets things going right? and then it's like well we better wrap it up real fast here we go and how are we gonna do it well let's just go through the lightsabers in the sand okay yeah done great great job jj which is cool and i didn't really think about 
that uh, they kind of explained, I guess, the ending a little more than it first appeared to me. You know, that the the sin of separating the the twins was brought back to you know bringing them back together and wrapping them up. And maybe that was obvious to you. Right? No, <laughs> I liked not, it. But yeah, no, I thought that was a, a cool way to end. I, I heard that like the Palpatine wasn't supposed to be in it, and it was like a late like, well, we got to do something. So it's not like JJ wanted Snoke to be the main villain of the whole. Series. And then it wasn't Snow Call, so he had to like figure out what to do, and it's like, well, I guess we could do this. So like for having to like kind of change your whole idea, I mean, it, it seemed to work. Um, I mean, there was a lot of information you could read about like why he didn't die, falling down the chute, and mm-hmm. Return of the Jedi, and all the other things, and so on and so forth. And it does reference like comic books, and they talk about like examples in the past of how things have worked out, and so on, and. So, but if you didn't read them, you know what I mean? How do you know? I didn't read I just read an article that summarized it all and into an article um, after I saw the movie. Yeah. Um, but it is... Um, going to sleep. Yeah, I mean, like I said, to, like, to have J.J. start it and then have a different person in the middle go, like, in a completely opposite direction and then have J.J. come back to finish it is kind of... It's tough to make it, like, cohesive across the board. Yeah. Well, and some of the unfair criticisms of, like, the Rose character, you know, they're saying... Oh, well, they sidelined the character because of all of these internet trolls that were making a big deal. And all I was thinking was just that. It's like, well, J.J. created these ten characters. Ryan added these three characters. And then when J.J. picked it up, he's not as interested in... Right. I mean, he didn't think of all the backstory and the, the plot arcs and stuff like that for these characters. Although there's, she's still in it. Yeah, there was, there, was a rumor, there was a rumor circulating that like there was like a three-hour cut mm. of the movie. There's still... Yeah. Demand and to, to, you know, like let's get the can we get the full movie just like the the Snyder cut of Justice League, mm-hmm. like let's see the Abrams cut of this movie because the Disney made him change it and mm-hmm. he wanted it to be almost three hours. They said no, it's got to be closer to like two twenty. So we've lost forty minutes of stories. There was going to be Force Ghosts and we we're going to have Ewan McGregor and we we're going to have everybody in the movie. And then it's like, is any of this even true or not true? And you know, like how do we have any idea about any of this stuff? Right. right. Um, well, there have been so many of those things that do get released. You know. Like, they go back and they say, okay, let's make the extended cut of this, or let's mm-hmm. add in... Yeah, I mean, a three-hour movie at a movie theater is usually not mm-hmm. what the movie theater oh. wants, or what a lot of people want out of movie. You know, you don't really right. want to... They want the turnover. They mm-hmm. want, you know, if we can have six shows in a day instead of five, that's better for us, and so on. Um, especially if the movie is popular, obviously. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I would like to... You know, if there's more, I'd like to see more. I always... I mean, even if it's not even <laughs> cut into the movie. Mm-hmm. I felt like though it was the least, if this makes sense, the least Star Wars of the the Star Wars movies. I felt like it was it was a, a well done movie, but it, I felt like just the way it was shot, the way it was really dark, and the plot was a little complicated. Complicated at times, it felt like it was a science fiction or science fantasy movie that was had Star Wars characters in it, but didn't feel as much. And I just noticed a lot less of. You know the the wipes and the the different types of things. You know transitions between things. Oh, it just mm-hmm. there was that just flavor. just some of it was a little, and then I, I don't know. I guess uh, the the ending. Like I said, because I wasn't as wrapped up in these these new characters, it was cool to see the ending. But of course, I don't know if anything's ever going to really match the trench run at the end of New Hope, where people are like cheering at the mm-hmm. end of end of it. Um, so it's kind of like hey, we're gonna get together. We're gonna fight a big battle again. There was, we are neglected to talk about, there was a new character that I think everybody cares about, Babu Frick, <laughs> who, you know, not quite Baby Yoda famous, no. True. but is quite popular mm-hmm. amongst people in the movie, so. Yeah. And Dio, you know, we can't forget about the yeah, I mean, he was, he was more entertaining than I thought he was going to be. Oh, I yeah. didn't mind him. Oh, I like J.J. Abrams did the voice, right, of uh, Dio, I think. But, but Babu Frick, I mean, I'll be honest. Yeah. I have I have secured a Babu Frick action figure oh. already. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> Comes with C three PO, but you know C three PO is like normal size, and Babu Frick is like also normal size. It's, like, it's a little disappointing, but <laughs> well, it's the only action figure you get. You got to get it. Actual size, yeah, that's fantastic. So, what about in the terms of the whole franchise? How do you feel? I mean, you said satisfied. Do you mean or yeah? Well, just closed just or ready to go away. I guess. I mean, you think it did a good job just of kind of closing all the do- the doors of the. Th- there's no way for me to really answer that anymore, unfortunately. Like, um, I felt closed at the end of uh, Return of the Jedi, and mm-hmm. I felt less closed at the end of uh, the the new arc of three. 
but it was just fitting in that space ahead. Now I feel like they opened it up and tried to close it back again and it didn't come back as nicely. Um, but I, I'm not upset by that. I'm just, I, it's sort of like writing a Star Wars novel. So yeah, good, go for it, terrific. And I can really ignore that if I want to or choose to and just go back to the other stuff, that's okay. Um, there were some things I, I thought I would not like and I did. Um, the couple of surprise cameos that weren't really surprises. Um, although the one they did hold back that I won't spoil here, I thought was well done. I thought it was effective. Um, it wasn't, it didn't break necessarily any of the rules of what had been set from before. Um, uh, like I said, my, my biggest disappointment was the amount of Princess Leia that was in the film. I wanted it to be very scant and it was not. Like I felt like she was a minor character in the film. Yeah. and four or five lines could have closed that segment off completely. And what's weird too, I know people were really f concerned about um, CGI or doing that sort mm -hmm. of thing with Carrie Fisher. But, well, you know, the fact that they did that in Rogue One, and then of course the, there's the one scene in this one where they de-age both Luke and, and Leia, mm -hmm. um, I thought was, was okay, you know, it was tastefully done and stuff like that. But you mentioned cameos. I do want to say, of course there was many, many cameos, mm -hmm. both in person and in voice. I gotta find out how in the world J.J. Abrams got Dennis Lawson to play Wedge again. I don't know, not a big sport. Oh, that was awesome! <laughs> but it's like Chris this is a guy. Chris actually to me and she was like, "Is that Wedge?" I said, "Yeah." But this is a guy who, and of course, he's Ewan McGregor's uncle. Mm -hmm. um, but is it, the guy's pretty much written off Star Wars. Wants nothing to do with it. They try to get him to come to Force Awakens. He's like, "That's boring to me. I want nothing to do with this." I mean, basically, much like Alec Guinness did um, shortly after Star Wars, they just kind of written off the whole series. And then suddenly, they get him in there for. It's great. <laughs> he was what two or three minutes turn. in it. It's great. Yeah. I mean, little bit pieces. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say something. They had a Jack Porkins kind of looking guy. They in did. There yes, too. I, I was saying like, the same oh, thing. Oh yeah. man, got it. You know, I did not know until about a week ago, maybe, that Porkins is also in Raiders of the Lost Ark. He is. Oh, yeah. Had, like, like, all of a sudden someone told me, and I'm like looking at the I'm like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> How have I never known, known this before? Yeah, he's one, isn't he one of the guys that comes and, and Indiana Jones uh, tells the story of how the, the Staff of Raw and stuff works, right? I think he's uh, one of the military guys, right? He's a military guy. I don't remember. It comes in the way beginning. Yeah, it's whole, definitely the beginning, but I thought it was a... Uh, a professor or something. I, I don't remember. But yeah, I remember him being in there. I was like, huh. Porkins. So, <laughs> Porkins, any last ideas on uh, Star Wars? The One big thing, of course, unfortunately, you, you compare Star Wars to other Star Wars, and in comparison to other Star Wars, is, <laughs> is that a word? Star Wars? Is, uh, Rise of Skywalker has done okay, but is fallen off. Um, Greatly of course. at the end, although you might, might have thought it being the last one that there might be uh, a lot. I don't think it's ever that way for trilogies. It's like mm -hmm. the first one always makes the most, and it's always downhill. Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking, I guess, with how Endgame, Avengers Endgame, kind of um, you know, uh, was such a huge. I think that's uh, different, though. Okay. I do. I mean, we could still look and compare it between Black Panther and it, right? And it was smaller, wasn't it? Still, eventually smaller. Endgame is bigger. Infinity War was smaller than okay. Black yeah. Panther. Okay. Right. But obviously, it, it's sad that there's still been. I'm, I imagine we're still seeing a little bit of Last Jedi fallout. You know, it definitely hurt Solo, and mm. it has hurt some of. Um, well, some I don't even think part. was it. Um, what movie came out? This has been number one for three weeks in a row, mm -hmm. and it was just another big, huge movie. Like, it's not easy to be number one at the box office three sure. weeks in a row. Right. I mean, now sure, it's not like there's you know it's a Christmas and there's not a whole lot out and so on and so forth, but like. I don't even think it was Avengers Endgame got the three weeks in a row, maybe, or something crazy like that. that didn't get yeah, Some super huge movie was only number one for two weeks. Last year, you mean? Last year. Well, no, I just mean, like, yeah, in general speaking, it was, it was relatively recent. I think it might have been Endgame. I'm not sure. But then we talked about something else, but there was something else that was, like, number one for almost two months. Remember that? Black Panther had a run of, like, in February being number one for a while. Yeah, I think that was um, it. But a lot of it, a lot of the huge runs of number ones... Mm -hmm were in the 80s when there was just way less films. Mm -hmm. Now they stack the movies, so it's like, well, we'll let you have your two weeks, but then we're coming out. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'm not totally convinced that Jumanji's not going to be the number one movie this weekend. Because, I mean, Jumanji seems to be hanging likes. on yeah. really, really well, and I don't know, nothing... I get 1917's going wide, but... Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that, that just won... That should blow it out. I, I, I would think because it just won, mm -hmm. and it's got buzz, and it's going wide, but it is also just like, you know... 
I mean, Dunkirk was successful, but did Dunkirk like really like ever? I don't remember if it like really. I don't think it was the same level. I think Dunkirk had a different, and there were two or three films like it at that time. Um, the level of buzz was so different for that movie too. Well, there was like was no buzz for 1917 kind of until like Sunday. <laughs> well, that was no. I, I started seeing advertising Some, a week and a yeah. half, two weeks ago. I saw advertisements, but it's like you know, that was like nobody really like you know I ever gonna see 1917. I, this feels like a much scanter year. Like there's last couple of years there have been six or seven films up for things like oh that good or this good yeah this year i'm like 1917 and Nine <coughs> everything else excuse me 1917 wasn't even considered to be like a real big award show hmm. potential ca candidate until it won now people are like oh maybe this is the film maybe and like hmm. i think the joker was a bigger favorite to win golden globe than it really we're almost out of time already. Uh, we didn't even get not. to Golden Globes. Uh, of course, 1917 well, did okay. win. I mean, uh, but we'll go through. We can go through that maybe next week. BAFTA nominations just came out, which is of course the next big uh, award ceremony. Of like seven. A couple quick things I want to throw yeah. out there. See, um, of course, big controversy. Disney Plus pulled a whole bunch of movies. Home Alone, Home Alone Two. Didn't know about two. Sent me an article. Pirates, Pirates oh, of the I Caribbean. Um, it has to do with licensing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Originally, they said there was a technical issue, but it sounds yeah. like they still got contracts they have money coming from somewhere else um christian bale might be in thor yes true <laughs> we happy with that Col colin farrell as penguin perhaps in the mm. robert pattison uh, mm. batman that's coming out uh, just do we, actually do we want penguin again is a question i don't know penguin's a tough it? character they're all tough but i mean you can't go back to joker i think danny devito did a better job in retrospect than i thought he did in watching it the first time around and, of course, well, yes. Frozen 2 has become the highest grossing animated feature ever. And, of course, uh, Bill and Ted face the music today. So it looks like their daughters are going, it's going to be Bill and Ted Psych. and their daughters. <laughs> Bill and Ted 3. It's going to be very... Uh, now, this one might make more money than the original because movies are just more expensive now. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's also for inflation, maybe not. No. But... So this weekend we got 1917's uh, going wide. Just Mercy is uh, no, also no. coming out like a boss and underwater. No, underwater is. All right, so we got one more week until Bad Boys for Life and for, goes up against Doolittle. Bad Boys for Life. Doolittle is the same deep side. Why do we need it? You know, what we need is another reincarnation of Doolittle. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Get yeah, Iron Man. <laughs> So we'll have to check in next week to see if Star Wars holds on another one spot. No. Uh, not going to happen? Oh. Okay. Uh, next edition of Inside Media Weekly. Thanks for joining us. This has dropped too much already. It dropped like 60%, 58% this week.